message. Dear God, we want to thank you for coming here with us and meeting us here today with your spirit. We're excited to be here together to spend a few minutes uh, on a word that be encouraging to us. And also, God, uh, we pray that you'll do a miracle in someone's heart with this, whether they're watching on video uh, and they come back another day or, or if we're here today. Please help us always. We leave this day in your care. Protect us. And in the name of Jesus, we pray to you. Amen. Amen. So So, um, you can go ahead and have a seat. Giovanni, nice to see you with us today. I'm so excited to hear you. Glad to be here. Laverne told me yesterday, you're not going to get rid, rid of me so quick. <laughs> but we know she's going to be here. Well, it's exciting. Today we're going to talk about church. Before we get started, though, um, are there any, you know, testimonies that we'd like to share today? I know there's a small group, but yeah. Oh, I've just learned, you know, in the, you know, I've just learned, like not recently, but throughout, I guess, kind of like in life, that unless we want change, the only way we're going to change is if we obviously surrender to God and say, I want to change, but without you, I can't do it alone. Whether we're fighting. Whatever it is we're fighting, our battles, our enemies, our our ghosts, or whatever it is we're fighting, you know, our habits or something that we're not doing healthy for ourselves, uh, we just need to say, you know what, God, I want to change, but I can't do it without you because, you know, it's just like a diet. I want to lose weight, but I can't do it without God because every time I see chocolate, I have to eat it. <laughs> and so, you know, it's like, I have to, when I pray and say, God, I can't do it without you, and I want to change and stuff, you know. Amen. So good. So we need him in order <laughs> yeah, to get him. What do we do? Surrender. And, yeah. Surrender. And it's really easier than think. I mean, people think it's a, a certain prayer that we need to say or a certain word, and then God will hear us. But it's not. He just wants us to open our heart and really mean it. You know, we don't play games either. And, yeah. And just ask for what we want, because it does say in the Bible, "Ask and you shall receive." Yeah. I think it's hard for men to reach that point, and it is sometimes for women to surrender to feel. You're helpless without the Lord. Uh, I know exactly when I did that. Uh, and it was a very wide eye-opener for me uh, as my testimony. So, uh, it was upstairs in the Rock Concert Church. Upstairs. And uh, I'd been invited there from, uh, from some other guys that ride motorcycles. Uh, they've been going and I actually went and sat with them. Uh, they encouraged me and said, I need a church. Is that a place in my life where I need a church? About halfway through the program, I've told this story. They got up and left. And I was uh, there by myself. I was like, where'd they go? I came because of them. <laughs> they left. Like I was in the song and they, they all left. And, uh, I stayed there in my chair and I listened. And whatever message that was, God used that message to do the trick on me, and it broke me down, and so up there by myself, I raised my hand, I gave my heart to Jesus, and uh, decided that I was going to let the Holy Spirit come into my heart and ch change me, and still changing me, it's going to change me for a long time, God's got a big work to do with me, so humbly we approach Him and we throw our burdens on Him, let Him help us. Uh, this last week I learned uh, as my testimony that we have to trust in God because God will ask you to do things that you are not comfortable doing. He will ask you to do things you're not confident doing. He'll ask you to do things that you, uh, you've never imagined you'd do. Uh, so, it works out. I went out in the garage and I prayed to God and I said, God, you better help me. I'm not worthy of doing this and I can't do this. And it worked out. Right? Well, you were there. It worked you out. the small group. The small group and the spirit. You felt the spirit in the whole thing. So, anyway, so God answers our prayers. He's real and He resides in us. 
we have to get to that point where we trust it. Okay. Any other uh, testimonies? Anything you'd like to share? Any prayer requests? Prayer requests? We can pray right now. I got a prayer request. I'll pray for something. Okay. Dear God, we want to pray for Sharon and uh, Laverne again. We know we did this yesterday. We want to pray that uh, Sharon will come back to us. I know she's she's been uh, hurt and. In, we, we just want her to know that we miss her. And God, we pray that your spirit will reach out to her and touch her and help her and heal her. And uh, now that Laverne's with her, we know that they can be a great, formidable power together as sisters. Uh, we just pray that you help them with whatever challenges they face so they can make it happen. And we, we leave their care in your hands because you, you, we know that when we, we can't do things, you do them for us. So. We'll just leave it in your hands, God, and pray that you're there with them. In the name of Jesus, amen. Amen. Okay. Um, Giovanni, would you mind if I pray for you? Go ahead. Dear God, we want to pray for Giovanni. Uh, I know part of Giovanni's history, God, and I know that he's reaching out to you. I know that he's making himself available to you. He's here with us. And we know that the Holy Spirit is, is with him and watching over him and we know that um, regardless of whatever struggles he faces god we know that you'll take care of him and you'll help him through it as you have his his dad and his family uh god we pray that you'll you'll help him see the value of of, of this place i know that he he loves god he loves you so we leave him in your care we know that you'll take care of him and you'll help him as you will us also in jesus name all right, should we talk about church? Yeah. Let's, uh, let's get into a message here. Um, we'll call this message All In. All In. What am I call it? How many of you ever played cards for money at any point in your life? You gotta admit that to you. Uh, there comes a point sometimes when you're 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 either up so high or down so low where you're just going to go all in and see what happens. The fight got real frustrating, so you're just going to get out of it one way or another. You put all the cards on the table, and uh, when you do that, you put all your cards on the table. You put all your resources on the table. You throw it right on the table, and you just whatever happens happens. It's either going to be really good or it's going to be really bad, usually because that's all your resources. We're going to talk about this with God uh, today. This is going to be uh, kind of quick, so stay with us if you're watching or if you're here. I really think that there's enough information here to do a miracle for you in just a few minutes. Financial advisors will tell you that uh, if you're going to you know, make a wise investment that you have to diversify. What does it mean? What does that mean? If someone says, take your portfolio, take your finances, take all your earnings and diversify them, what does that mean? That means you don't put all your money in one basket, right? Diversify means you're going to set out your baskets and if this one, you, you lose a basket, you still got some baskets left. That's what diversification means in business. That's how you diversify. You don't put all your eggs in one basket. When it comes to the most important investment you're ever going to make in, in your life, God's strategy is opposite. Because God doesn't look at things like we do. We either believe we're going to lose some things, so we take it easy, we diversify, because we want to be protected. But if you're really confident, what are you going to do if it's a sure thing? You're going to keep it all in one basket, right? In the case of serving God, it's the opposite. The strategy is not diversifying, right? The strategy is concentration. Taking everything that you have and giving it to Jesus. That's the difference. That's a different approach than it is with finances. That's how we approach God. 
Luke chapter 9 and verse 23 says, If anyone comes after me, let him disown himself and take up his cross daily and follow me. That's not easy to do. Right? It's pretty hard. Sometimes it's overwhelming. So you find yourself, you know, in the garage in prayer, talking out loud to God, and you're saying, hey, uh, you got to help me because I can't do this by myself. If you're here and you're, here, you're listening to me, give me strength. We've learned before in the past that if we're going to be a true follower of Jesus, you've got to put all your chips on Him. All your chips on Him. That's what He expected from His followers. He would say, come, come on, follow Me. That's what He said to the, uh, some of His followers who were fishermen. And they said, you know, well, we're fishers. We're fishermen. We're, we're, we're carpenters. We've got professions. And He'd say, ah, come on, let's go. You'd be a fisher of men now. You were putting it all on the table uh, for Jesus. You remember uh, about a year ago, we talked about being willing to sell the ranch. Does anybody remember that? Uh, we've got a message that talks about being willing to sell the ranch. And that means giving all of, of your life to Jesus. Denying yourself. Denying yourself. Devoting yourself. Concentrating. Completely. Totally unequivocally to the control of the Christ in every area of your life. Now that's, you know, that's not going to be easy to slide that across the table. Is it? Uh, it's hard. Uh, one way that we do it is by giving our body to His body. Let me explain what that means. I want you to think about you sitting here now in your chair. Something you take for granted. You're just sitting there. You could be just sitting there watching the video, I don't know, or you're here. Um, you might not pay attention to all the amazing things that are happening right now with you that you, you know, you may be not seeing them. But you're, you're one of the most amazing things that happen, that are happening right now. And I'm talking about your body, how your body works, how your parts work of your body. Your heart beats 100,000 times each day. Your blood is on a 60,000 mile journey through your body. Ah. Your eyes distinguish up to one million color surfaces. One million. You can, you can decide that's a different shade. One million surfaces. You can figure that out. And it takes in more information than the largest telescope known to man. Your lungs inhale 2 million liters of air every day without asking. It just happens. You don't even think about it. There are, they're large enough to cover a tennis court, your lungs, what it inhales. Our hearing is so sensitive it distinguishes between hundreds of thousands of different sounds. Hundreds of thousands. Your brain is complex. You're just sitting there. You don't even think about it. Then the most powerful computer and has over 100 billion nerve cells. Pretty amazing, isn't it? We give birth to 100 billion red cells every day. 100 billion red cells you give birth to every day in your body. Replacing themselves. When you touch something, you send a message to your brain at 124 miles an hour. Pretty fast. For those of us who, you know, are ADD, that might even sound slow. But that's fast. We are 70% water. That's why most of us are wet. <laughs> We're 70% water, and that's the truth. Our nose is our personal air conditioning system, and you may not even think about it. It warms cold air, cools hot air, and filters impurities from your breathing. In one square inch of your hand, you have, uh, we have nine feet, nine feet in here of blood vessels and 600 pain sensors right here in your hand. 9,000 nerve endings in your hand. 
36 heat sensors, 75 pressure sensors in your hand. That's why it works so well. We have copper, you have zinc, you have cobalt, you have calcium, your body. Uh, uh, manganese, phosphates, nickel, silicone, all right here. You don't even think about it. You're just trying to sit down. That's all you're doing. But your body's working. And it's amazing. To become a member of something particularly requires a lot of different parts. There's no question about it. The human body is one of the most amazing things, uh, parts of God's creation. There's another body that's even more amazing and more incredible, but it's a lot like your body just sitting here. That's what we're going to talk about. So for you watching, I hope you can make an application to this in your life. Okay. Unlike the human body, it will last for all eternity, and that is the body of Christ. The body of Christ. What is it? It's known as the church. The church. The Christ of body is the church. God sees his church not as a building, but as a body. We are the members of the body. You are the piece of the body that makes it work. The church is in a chair, and you're part of the chair. Making an application of your body right here, how it works together. Romans chapter 12 and verse 5, it says, I'm not making that imagery up. This stuff, we're, we're told in Romans chapter 12 and verse 5, I am Christ, so in Christ, we who are many form one, what do you think it says? One body. What is this? Romans 12, 5. And each member belongs to who? To each other, right? Your hands belong to your arm. Your arms belong to your shoulders. Your shoulder belongs to your, you know, your mass, your chest. Your neck belongs to your head and your, your right? Belongs to each other. You belong to each other, the church. To become a member of something, particularly a church, means different things to different people for some reason. And, and I get it. People are afraid of it. You talk about church and there goes your message on Facebook. Clicks off. People just pass it by. If you don't believe that, be a pastor and send something out that has to do with God or church. You get a couple likes. You post a rock concert and you get 500 likes. People's mentality of, of church has changed. They're uncomfortable with church. It conjures up things that aren't, uh, you know, and church hasn't always worked well for people. Some people think about paying dues more than church. They think about, you know, the collection of, uh, you know, funds, offerings. Maybe that's when you think of church. That's what you think. The collection. I don't know what you think about. Some think about having their name on some invisible roll call that nobody sees. I, won't, I don't want my name on that list. <clears throat> that's a church list. People think about church different. Some people think about getting hooked up <clears throat> into formal religion. They don't like the organization. They don't like to be organized. They don't like to be, you know, controlled. Every Sunday I gotta go to church. That's how they feel and think about it. The Bible paints a different picture of membership in a church. Uh, being a member of a church was considered the same thing as being a body part. An organ in a living body. You'll never understand the value of the meaning of church membership unless you get this in your mind. And, oh. I've had to change my thinking about church. It happened about seven years ago. It's about seven years ago. I had to change my mentality about church. 
I just stopped thinking about those things. Fortunately, I found a fantastic pastor here who helped me change my thought process about church. And on Sunday, Sunday I want to be at church. Sunday, I have to be in church. And not because I'm up here. Because I know who I am. I gotta be here. That's what changes me. I hope this helps you. Can you just pray with me? Dear God, we want to ask for your spirit. We're going to look into a verse of the Bible to see our value here together. We leave this in your care. Do a work in us in the name of Jesus. <clears throat> the church is not an organization it is an organism that's a change you could make in your mind it's an organism it's, it's the body of Christ you'll never understand the value or meaning of church membership unless you get it in your mind church is not a building it's not it's a body don't let the building scare you it's a body the church is not an organization On the other hand, in order for the organs of the body to fulfill their purpose, they have to be what? Connected. Right? They have to be connected. Right, Lona? We all got to be connected here in the church. Bob ready to make some great points here with church. Right. Any vital organ that is detached from the body will not only fail to fulfill its purpose, it's going to do what? If I cut my hand off and lay it down and I walk away, what's going to happen to my hand? It's going to die. It's going to die. Modern technology says that they can take some parts and they can reattach them. It may never be quite the same again, but they can try to reattach them. But if you leave it detached completely, its purpose is gone. You lose the purpose of the hand, or the arm, or the leg, or the toes. In other words, every vital organ in your body must be all in. All in. You got to be all in, right, Laverne? You have to be all in so it works right. In the early church, there was a healthy a health problem in the early church. Not every organ was all in. They weren't all in. And the body was suffering for it. So in Hebrews chapter 10, even back in the early days, people began to make, uh, make the church just one of an options they had. What do I mean by that? Any comments? The church started making uh, people get from the church, the, the organization there, the group, the body, started making church just one option. What were some other options? Think about it. What could be an option to church? Work. What else? Family life, right? Could keep you away from church forever. I mean, you could be with, doing stuff with your family every Sunday. Money. 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 You're either going to make it or you're going to spend it. I'll tell you what was my problem with church on Sunday. I've said this before. Sunday was my riding day. It was the day I liked to ride. I was already coming off of work from Saturday, stressing me out. So Sunday I was fresh. And I could just take off. Go to Idaho for the day. Go to Seattle. Have dinner. Come back home. That was my Sundays. Back here we find that the early church was the same. Back in those days, they began to make a church just one of many options. Where to spend their time. Where to spend their talents. And where to spend their treasures. Chapter 10. Hebrews chapter 10. So the apostle sends him a reminder, and this is what he says. And I'm going to remind you too, because we're part of the body. If you're here in the Spanish in the morning, or you're here in the afternoon, <clears throat> you're part of the group. 
This is what the apostle would have said to you. Let us, let us consider one another to provoke unto love and to good works. Let's, let's, let's consider this together. Be loving. Do good works for each other. That's what he's saying. Then he says, not forsaking the assembling of ourselves together. What do you mean by that? Church. And if you're uncomfortable with church, I'm sorry. But I got to tell you, a lot of good things happen in church if you let them happen to you. That wasn't the only good thing he was telling them to do. Get together. Do things together. Plan things together. Talk to each other. Communicate with each other. Not forsaking getting together. Uh, assembling yourselves as the manner of some is. Is that with you? You're going to come to times in your life where you miss more church than other times. And when you do, I just want you to think back. You've got to get the part that you provide to the body back to the body so you live. Because otherwise, those good and powerful and wonderful things that you gain here begin to die. And I'm not saying that because I want you to come to our church. I'd love to see you here. But I want you to find a church. As the manner of some is, the apostle says, but exhorting one another, exhorting, encouraging, and so much the more, as you see the day approaching. What day is he talking about? Judgment day. Right. When you run out of time. Do it now. Don't worry about so much. That's what you got to do. In my case, I have to be at church because I know me. I have to. And being at church protects me. It keeps me, my mind busy, filled, occupied. And when I do good things for the church, I leave some things out. Right? I need to be here and encourage you to think, think, think about how positive it could be for you. Okay. The author of Hebrews comforts his readers then to call their bluff. He's calling their bluff, and he tells them why their relationship with the church is important. So we're going to finish this up with a couple things. I'm going to try to go real fast through this so we get this. Why it's important for you to be here. Why is your relationship so important with the church? Key takeaway, find a church where you can be all in and go all in to the church. Help out. Be a part of it. Engage yourself in service. Humble yourselves before the pastors. Uh, I, I got to tell you, when you walk into a church and you have a good feeling with the pastors, uh, you know, uh, I can't express to you enough what pastors here have done for me. Pastor Ron, Pastor Luis, Pastor Jose, they've changed me. And that's when we go in, we, we take that, we learn from them. Key takeaway. Find a church where you can go all in. Where you don't have to diversify. Because you're confident. Why should you be a member of a church? And I, I know that I've had these conversations. And I know there's some people that are going to message me on this. <laughs> uh, because they don't see value in a church. Okay, and I, I, I can uh, empathize with whatever you've been through in a church. But almost every time the word church is used in the Bible, it refers to a local, visible, single congregation that meets a need in the location, in the community. <clears throat> the Testament, New Testament always assumes membership to in a local church, local communities, right? Like Wapato, right? Local communities, that'd be a church. The Christian who is not a member of a church is compared in the Bible to an organ without a body. Here's your hand, your great hand. <clears throat> your great hand, you got five fingers. Right? Okay. The Christian who is not a member of, of, of a church is compared to, in the Bible like an organ without a body, a sheep without a flock, and a child without a family. In Ephesians chapter 2 and verse 19. It's, I'm not making it up. It says, you belong in God's household and every other Christ, with every other Christian. That's what it says in the Living Bible. In other words, every believer ought to be all in with every other believer and for every other believer. You're all part of the body. We're different. 
We have different likes. We come sometimes from different lifestyles. But when you come to church, you are all in. Because not only does the church need us, but we need it, the church. The author of Hebrews points out, I oh, hope somebody gets this. Let us consider how to stir one another up to love and good works. Not neglecting meeting together in the English Bible, that's how it puts it, as some have the habit, they have the habit of missing. They have the habit of not being a part of the body. But encourage one another. There are some great benefits that bring us to church. The author of Hebrews lists two. We stimulate each other, that's one, <clears throat> uh, to loving others and do, doing for others, and we encourage others by just showing up. I have found at least, you know, three more, four more benefits to church. Um, what happens What happens to a pastor when he sees someone come through the door? Anybody? Ideas? It's an amazing, encouraging experience for me. And so, but I'm excited when you're here because I, you get to feel it too. I mean, you feel it. It's amazing. Okay. Okay. First of all, there are physical benefits. Um, according to a study from Indiana's Purdue University published in the Journal for Scientific Study of Religion, people who join a church, people who join a church, attend regularly and get involved in the church, get sick less. This is what the study showed. They're sick less. Why would that be? Why do they get sick less if you come to church? Because it helps you deal with things and stress often makes us sick, right? It makes sense. It was found that non-church members who never attend church or participate in a church were more than twice as likely to report health problems as those who are members. You can argue with me on this, but this I truly uh, believe this. God knew what he was doing when he said, do not forsake the assembling of yourselves together. Not long ago, there was an article that came out, and I, I don't know how scientific it is. Uh, I'm not a scientist, but it makes sense to me. <clears throat> so I'm just going to read it to you. I want you to think about this. Do not ride automobiles, a car. They cause 20% of all fatal accidents. Cars, 20%. Do not stay at home. 17% of all accidents occur in the home. Do not walk on the street or the sidewalk. 14% of all accidents occur to pedestrians. Do not travel by air, rail, or water. 16% of all accidents happen only by those types of transportation. Only 0.001% of all deaths were reported during worship services at the church. <laughs> the point is, if you come to church, it's a good, safe place to be. I don't know how true those statistics are. I didn't ballot about it, but uh, I want to share with you the point. Therefore, the safest place you could ever be at any time is the church. So come to church. We encourage you. There are also emotional benefits to joining a church uh, and getting actively involved. You'll not only be better healthily, healthy, healthier, you'll be happier. The Connecticut Mutual Life Insurance Company studied people who have gone to church who actively were involved in prayer, reading their Bibles, surrendering their lives to Christ. <clears throat> when they were compared to those who hadn't, Americans who did not attend church were not religious. This is what they discovered. Church attenders were more likely to say they were happy at home. Church attenders almost were twice as likely to believe their work was con uh, contributable to society. Church attenders were more than twice as likely to reconcile their marital problems uh, rather than divorce. Church attenders are six times more likely to do community volunteer work it's not a wonder we're being told uh, uh, that we are told that being all in with your church can be encouraging. Encouraging for you, encouraging to others, parts of the body, and also to the community. Okay, we're almost done. The most important, uh, most importantly, spiritual benefits that come from being a member of the church. 
<clears throat> Let me just give them to you quickly, okay? Church, identity. Just like a uniform identifies you as a soldier with a badge, right? Uh, being a member of the church, uh, you're identified by the way you live as a believer. Maturity. We grow best as we grow together in our body. The church provides you a place where you can mature, express faith, and you can grow it here. Ministry. The church gives you a place to discover your spiritual gifts and an avenue to put them to work. I'd like to do more of this in the community with you. We should start coming up with things we can do in the community to help people. Because I can see gifts here. I can see gifts. We've been through a lot. We, we can extend that and help other people. So good. <clears throat> now what, what should I become as a member of a church? Listen to how the church was formed in the New Testament. Those who believed were baptized and added to the church. They joined with other believers and committed themselves to the apostles' teaching and fellowship. <clears throat> That's found in Acts chapter 2. They worshiped together at the temple each day and met in homes, small groups, and shared their meals with great joy and generosity. So, five things. They, they believed, they baptized, uh, they joined in the church family, and then they committed to regular worship, and they connected in, in groups, whatever groups were in the church. Immediately you notice something different here. The people in this church and churches of today. The difference being between being a church attender, and this is the key point of all of this stuff. The key point. Here's the difference. The difference between being a church attender and a church member is your commitment. Attenders are spectators, right? Maybe you feel you're a spectator. You're step spectator. Members are participants. Attenders are consumers. You're the purchasers if, if you're an attender, right? You're a spectator. You're a purchaser, a consumer. Members are contributors. See the difference? They're involved. Participants. Uh, contributors. I want you to understand that the Christian life is more than just commitment to Christ. It is a commitment <clears throat> to others in the church. You become a Christian by committing yourself to Christ. Um, but you become a church member by committing yourself to the church and to other members of the church. Um, we had just read in Hebrews how coming together is a way of encouraging others. Can I tell you that one ministry, uh, that is one ministry. Every single one of us can exercise is encouraging other, others. When you get involved in your church by loving each other and by doing work for each other, it's just encouraging. This verse tells us that we should stir up one another to that. I want to give you just a couple ways you could do it, and everyone in this room could see it happen. You could do it. You say, I don't know how to do it. Um, people in the church will show you how to do it, but you can do it. It's simple and fun. It's on Sunday morning. You arrive at church Sunday morning. You get to the church. Um, the best way to begin serving Christ through the church is to volunteer. Is to volunteer. What could you do to volunteer? Anybody? Vacuum. Did you say vacuum? Yeah, like clean. Great. Great idea. Great idea. Anything else? Lona, what could you do to volunteer in the church? Think of anything? How about <clears throat> helping with the sound? I know Lona, you've, you've helped with a few things. Greeter. Greeting people. Post the luncheon. Uh, help help with hosting, host a luncheon, cleaning up, straightening up, making sure things, you know, helping, helping. Could be anything, but you can come up with something. <clears throat> I'll tell you, Brother Gian, right at the back door, shakes my hand. I don't think he realizes how encouraging that is to me, that he does that. It might bug somebody, but it sure don't bug me, right? When he shakes my hand. You know what that tells me? He's, he's putting in service what he's doing that he's serving that's what it tells me so every time he shakes your hand you grab his hand it's his service right yeah so when i see someone reaching out like that i think that you're serving you're volunteering i love it 
Okay. <clears throat> Let's see here. I don't ever want you to think you're just going to church. I want you to feel like you're part of the church. Um, so here's what I'd like to ask you to do. Find a church. Find a church where the worship is uplifting, inspiring, motivating, centered on Jesus Christ, directed to the praise of God, and based on the Word of God. That's what I want to encourage you to do. Knowing they all have different styles, we enjoy, remember, substance is more important than style. I like a concert, but if that's all I'm getting at a church, is that feeling? I'm missing something else that I might get somewhere else. I was part of a church in Yakima for three years. Three years. Do you know how many times I talked to the pastor? Once. Once. And that was a hello, how are you? That's it. But the music was great. Made me feel good. The coffee they served was great. Because I love coffee. So it got me through the door. And it was upstairs I gave my life to Jesus. But there was something more that I wasn't getting from church till I came here. And we don't serve coffee here. We don't. We should. Oh. I'm not saying I'm against it. I'm just saying, sometimes you could be missing something that might be more important to your life somewhere else. That's all I'm saying. So you might get what you need somewhere. Right? But all I'm saying is look around. That's what I'd like to ask you to do. Try not to be missing out on this real encouraging, important, meaty stuff that the Apostle Paul was encouraging. Find that kind of church. So let's end it, our message today. God wants all of us to be in a church. He'd like to see you there. You could, you could argue with me because, I mean, some of us have. But God would sure like to see you join us in church and sing with us in church. A final story tells it all. Now I'm going to tell you this story. It's only going to take a second, a few seconds. Well, I want you to listen close because you'll get tied up in the words. Are you ready? I hope someone doesn't work. Uh, God doesn't work in somebody. And you get what this means. This story involves four people in the church. Four. And there's not that, you know, many of us here today. So, <clears throat> this involves four people in the church. Here's their names. Everybody, somebody, anybody, and nobody. That's their names in the church. The church needed help meeting its financial obligations. And everybody was asked to participate. Everybody was sure that somebody would do it. <laughs> Anybody could have done it. Nobody did it. But do you know who did it? Nobody. Nobody did it. <laughs> uh, it ended up that everybody blamed somebody when nobody did what anybody could have done. <clears throat> when the church needed some people to help with the kids' ministry, somebody was asked to help. But somebody resented being called on because <clears throat> anybody could have done just as well. After all, it was really everybody's job. In the end, the work was given to guess who? Nobody. Nobody! Because <laughs> nobody did it! <laughs> the process went on and on. Whatever the task they needed to be done, nobody could be counted on to do it. Nobody visited the sick. Nobody gave in the church. Nobody shared their faith. In short, nobody was very faithful in the church. Finally, 
there came a day when somebody left the church. Somebody left. And guess what? They took anybody and everybody with them. And guess who was left? Nobody. Somebody. <laughs> Nobody. Nobody. <laughs> Got left. The truth is, everybody needs somebody, and nobody doesn't even need anybody. <laughs> you, you put all that together in your head and you can. You claim to be a truly devoted follower of Christ. You do. If Jesus loved the church enough to give himself for it, you should love it enough to give your life to it. When it comes to his body, your body should be what? All in. In. That's it. All in. As hard as that might be for you, if you're all in, you're always a success. It's going to work out, I'm telling you. I know. I know. Okay, that's our message today.